Continuing with the preliminaries of R, the next thing I want to tell you about is how to talk to R. So I mentioned earlier that R is an interpreted language, and that means that you can actually kind of have a conversation with it. Um, ask it for something, and it'll reply immediately instead of having to send it this whole contained batch of things to do. So this is the basic overview of how you'll get started talking to R, and I'll go through each of these steps individually. But the skeleton of it is that you'll open what's called an R session. That will have an area called the console with a prompt in it, and you can enter an expression there. Once you enter it, if everything went well, you'll get back a response, and then you repeat those steps two and three until you're done with your analysis. So an R session is just an instance of R that you're using in that moment. Um, you open it by double clicking on R Studio in your computer, and we'll walk through doing that in just a minute. And typically that will give you what's called a fresh R session. So you won't have any of your extra libraries loaded. If you had read in data before, it won't be read in again. Um, there's a way to save your R session and then open that back up, but I recommend against that because we wanna move towards habits of good reproducibility. And we'll talk about that a lot later in the class, but for now, I recommend that you always um, start fresh. So this means that when you open up our studio, you'll need to do your setup in terms of reading in your data and, and loading your libraries. And we'll start out doing that at the console, but that, that'll be a pain to repeat that every time. So later we'll move towards doing, using what's called a script where you can write your whole conversation and replay it very quickly when you open back up your R session. So when we look at the at the at your um, session in R Studio, it'll have several different sections which are called panes. As I mentioned, we'll start with one of those called the console. Um, this lets you talk to R again. It's that interpreted part, and the prompt will have a caret symbol typically where you you type things in, and then you'll press the return key to send that in for R to evaluate. So this is a cartoon look at it. Um, it might be at different places on your computer. You can rearrange so that these sections are in different panes, but you can see how this looks almost like a window with these separate panes. The console's up here, and here's the prompt. So when you do press return, R will respond in one of three ways. Um, ideally, it will do exactly what you wanted and return the output. Everything went well. Another thing that can happen is it's listening for a full, what's called an expression. And we'll talk about what our expressions are in the next set of slides. But if you have not completed a full expression yet, then it'll give you a plus sign. This means it's waiting for more. It doesn't want to interrupt you. And clearly you haven't finished your thought yet. So it's waiting for you to, to put in a bit more. And the final thing is you can type an expression but get something wrong. You could call the wrong function or you could um, ask it to read a data set you haven't loaded yet. And in that case, you'll get an error message and then a new prompt where you can, you can try things again and try to fix your error. So to talk with R, as I just mentioned, you need to understand this idea of an expression. Most of the expressions in R will be some combination of two elements. One is a function call and the other is an object assignment. We're going to be going through both of those in the next few sets of slides to make sure that you fully understand what's going on with those pieces. And um, just to wrap that up, this really does encapsulate everything that you might need to do in R. According to John Chambers, one of the, the, the um, creators and developers of, of S, which was a precursor to R and, and somebody very involved in the development of R as well, so that everything that exists in R you can think of as an object and everything that happens in R is a call to a function. So just like nouns and verbs in grammar, these operate in those two ways and they let you do everything that you might need to do in R. So let's take a look very briefly at the console in R and how you open a new session in R. So if I double click on R Studio, you can see that this opens up a new session for me. This section right here is the console, and you can see that I've got a prompt. So I can go and I can put in an expression. This is an expression that will make a vector with the numbers 1, 3, and 5. I've got a full expression there, so when I press return, you can see that it's, a, it's evaluated that. And we could even add on, and we could add 2 to all of those. And now you see that it's added to. Now, if we hadn't completed the expression, if we left off what it should add, you can see that we get a plus sign down here where it's still listening. 
And then the last thing, if we get that expression wrong, maybe, I'm not sure if two pluses will do that. Oh, it turns out that works. Let's try a B instead here. So as far as I know, this isn't the real name of a function. So we've essentially misspelled our function. And so you can see here that it gives us an error and says it could not find the function that we were looking for.